Hello everybody, and this is the third tutorial for end cursors. And today we will be looking at attributes, as you, again you can tell from the path, which is a very brilliant thing about terminals. So, one thing I forgot to mention in tutorial 2 is that there is in fact one other method of outputting, and that is called add string. Now, the way I see it is that it's pretty much made obsolete by print w and mv print w because while it does use similar syntax to add char, it doesn't have the versatility that print w does. So I'd end up using print w either way, even if it isn't isn't necessarily used with. I think it's PD cursors doesn't support uh, print w, which is a problem of a PD cursors, and which is, that is why I prefer to use end cursors, of course. So I'm going to do some thing called attributes. We're not going to get into the more advanced ones because that's for the next tutorial. We're going to go for all the boilerplate. And what attributes are are methods of making your text more pretty. And from putting emphasis on things and such if you like writing GUIs. Though if you do like what writing GUIs, why on earth are you watching a video on terminal handling and terminal graphics? So obviously we'll actually remember to type in what initializes our function, our program first. Um, so, like that, of course, we'll live on this general space there. And then we'll get started. So, the syntax for using and creating attributes is very, very simple. What you essentially do is you type in atron which is a function, and then we type in whatever attributes we want to switch on. So, for example, if I look to my lovely little reference guide, because there's quite a few reference, there's quite a few attributes, there's about 16 or 17, and to be honest, you shouldn't really need to remember them. My lovely Unix cursors explained from 1992, which cost me exactly 58p off Amazon. Um, we see numerous ones, although I'm just going to do the ones I remember. It's even survive just picking up the book and looking. <laughs> so we've got a standout, which makes obviously things stand out. And we've got a underline, which underlines stuff. And then there's various other ones. And we use the or operator, which you might remember from the the logical operation. I think it was bitwise operations tutorial that I did recently. Put the semicolon there. That this all them together and the value that results will cause these to display on the text. So just to demonstrate this, I don't print W. No need for it to move around or anything. In fact, better yet, maybe we should make it move around. So get it roughly in the center of the screen. Although there are there are particular variables come up the defined variables to help you with this. Um, I'll go over them later. So say I think we've got 80 by 24 that's the default one so we will do 12 by 40 I understand and we'll type in just to add extra emphasis to it and we end this simply by typing at trough and I, I think oops I typed in control s that shows I've been keeping my eye off the ball I think you do this. You just switch off the particular ones you want to switch off. So, so stand off. That's stand off. <laughs> I've been watching too many Western films. Uh, line. So, that should switch off the Atron, if I recall correctly. So, because. Why, it, why this would be implemented this way is because maybe you want to switch off say underline and keep stand out and this but we don't in this case so we just switch off both and this will just display this so why don't we go and test that theory eh? <laughs> the, I should really start making make files for this but considering they're just one line programs we may as well we may as well just do one line Also, it's good for practice, so. Don't know why it was necessary to do that. But no. See, so it makes it stand out. It might not be quite as clear. I don't think the standout on this terminal 
makes the underline clear because it's quite in it's quite interesting because when I was writing these programs on the Raspberry Pi, which is if you'd seen my video on the ones I published on GitHub, it was interesting because Xterm, which was on the GUI, had more features than the default terminal, such as the one I'm using here. So it would display it in full on Xterm, while under the default terminal with Bash, it would only display some of the features. It's quite interesting. And you've got to bear in mind, especially with um, colour, which I'm going to, to explain next tutorial, that your user might not necessarily have the capability to support these things. And I believe Encursus picks up on this and just doesn't do it. Although it's probably better to give the user the option in proper programs, although not necessarily with tests. So thanks for watching this. Like and subscribe. And if you want, of course. Um, and I will just make this next tutorial and I'll upload them in a minute. So thanks for watching and goodbye.